Welcome back, everyone. This is Frank Whiskey Charlie Zero Oscar. This is the FT818, and I'm going to do a field setup for it. There's going to be different uh, accessories that you might need in the field. Most of it you don't need, but it's always nice to have to make your experience more unique and fun. So this is, the, again, the FT818, and I'm guessing the uh, FT817 is very similar. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is put the internal battery if you want it. You take this screw off, you take, uh, you move this over, and then you pop the lid. Put the battery in, read the directions on how to charge it. I won't be using the internal battery because it doesn't give me the specifications I need for SSB. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to be using a um, an external battery for it rained a lot yesterday on Saturday. So this is the BioNO Power uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, 12 volts, three amp hours. Uh, multiply those numbers, 36 amp, uh, 36 watt hours. BLF two one two zero three eight B. That's the name of this particular battery. Now, this battery will probably last for SSB easily two hours or more. Now, the radio comes with a um, power cable. It has a barrel connection here on one end, and on the other end, what I did was put Anderson power poles, which fits perfectly with my battery. One thing about this battery is that it has the connection for the load, right? And then it has another connection, another barrel connection that you can hook up to the wall with a with a brick to power it or something else. Um, I'll talk about other ways of uh, charging this while connected to the radio. Um, this barrel connection easily goes over here. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's a bit loose and I can easily see if I, you know, pull this hard, it might damage the connection, but it's there. Um, I did not cut the wire because I do something different to this. I do like to put a label on these wires because sometimes I'll forget it says FT818. Then what you can do is you have your battery and you can put a rubber band or something to hold it. I'm going to put it on the underside. I'll explain why. And then you just connect it here and you're on your way. There it is, right? And I put it on the bottom so that I can hear it, the speaker. This, of course, you can always rearrange differently. You can, you can manage and cut that smaller. Now, the next thing you want also is your microphone, right? And the microphone just hooks up right there. There's one orientation. There it is. That's really nice. And then you can have um, headphones if you like. You can use these inexpensive headphones. You can probably find some at the 99 cent store. Uh, headphones are really good um, for those weak signals. Now there is a switch right here that you might want to change. It says uh, speaker this way and then headphones on the other side. Headphone, you want to do that to attenuate the audio that comes out from here. And um, you put it on speaker and you have these, it might be too loud. And then you have to consider the antenna. If you're going to use this antenna in the front or in the back. And you have to set the radio and I think it's uh, the function number seven, the menu. You press and hold the function button, you look at number seven. Now we will do, be doing this a little bit later. And then you can choose the rear or the front. And that's it. You're ready to go. You just press the button here. After you put your antenna, then you're on your way. That's all you really, really need. You don't need, you don't need anything else. And then you're on your way to do some contacts. Now, what I'm going to show you is some of the things 
that I have done to make this a little bit more um, modular and a little more convenient for me. Um, a lot of these things, most of these things you don't need to use the radio. Um, like example, for example, this battery, you don't need it. You can use the internal battery that they gave you. Um, so I'm going to keep this in my bag as a backup, just in case I need it. I'm still going to use the BioNO. I feel like the BioNO is better fit for me in this situation. So back here, um, there's the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a device here. It's called the, and this one's called the WinCamp. There are different names for this device. Uh, let me see. There I go. <clears throat> there are many names for this device. Uh, I got this one on on Amazon. Took a few weeks to get it. Um, it has still has the barrel connection, the same one actually as the one on the power cable, but it has the Anderson power poles that um, is a little bit more solid in the orientation. So you got to take out the screw um, that is for the ground. You can't use that same screw, by the way. And then you put this and orient it in the right way, making sure it's nice and firm, right? Then you take the screw that they give you, with the washer, and then you screw it in there. Do your best. Don't uh, over tighten, okay? Now it's solid, very nice. Now, I like to put the battery on the top because I don't use the speaker. I'm using the head, I'm using the headphones. So speaker, that's fine. I put it on the top, it's a little bit easier to manage if I wanna put the radio flat like this. Then I'm gonna connect it right here. I still have enough room for my ACC data key and then also for the antenna. So there's enough room. And another thing here, this seems to be a little bit better in orientation and putting it this way so I can put it inside of a bag. Uh, this is a rubber band. As you know, rubber bands get brittle after a while, so maybe maybe you can find something else, but that's all I had at the moment, okay? And we talked about these connections here, right? Now, the next thing that I like is these, um, uh, strap handles and these come with the radio just unscrew the screws put the handle in there um, I like them because you can put things like this this is the other side this is a uh, MSR night glow zip poles I put these on a lot of my items uh, at night you can see them glow so if it's on a table or something it's really dark I know that there's something there that I can pick up. So I have that there. Um, do you need that? No. Do you need the straps? Maybe. And we'll talk about why you might want to need those straps. Straps. Okay. So the next thing is the an antenna. Now this is an MFJ uh, 20 meter retractable antenna. It's a telescoping antenna. It's pretty tall, actually. Um, on one end, it has a BNC connection, which is great because what you can do is you can put the BNC connection on it, extend the antenna, and then you might need a counterpoise. Now, if you're touching the radio, right, you're probably the counterpoise. But um, you can always uh, figure out a way to put some type of, um, you know, a ring connector here near the ground 
or you can unscrew uh, one of these screws over here in the body that also is touching ground or this screw that's over here with this connection that is also touching ground you can figure something out for ground um, if, if needed now let's look at this here so when you turn it on I'm going to turn on the power right I'll lower this down a little bit one thing is you need to figure out uh, how which connection antenna connection is the radio using so if you click and hold on the F button right and you go to number seven using the uh, cell dial number seven it says front now if I use rear right in this case let's put rear press and hold on the F button you'll see that it says R see that that R says it's using the rear, which is very, very cool because um, it's telling you which which antenna it's using. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this off for the moment. I'm gonna talk about another antenna. So this antenna in particular, you might need a counterpoise. You might want to do that. Um, do you need one of these? No, you don't have to buy one. We'll talk about something that is less expensive. Um, what else? Um, I have a signal stick. A lot of people like these, and when they first came out, I bought one. But I'm not too particularly fancy about them. They're very good at two meters, but when they go into 70 centimeters, 70 centimeters, it starts to fail a little bit. Some people have suggested to put a counterpoise as well, and it works, and it does. Cool thing about the signal stick is that. It's flexible, and you can put it in the bag that way. And like I said before, the sun, for whatever reason, uh, is behind a cloud. All right. Um, hopefully the sun will come back. So this one is a 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna. 2 meters for sure. And it has BNC connection, which is really nice. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to focus right there. I'm going to turn it on. We're going to change. I'm going to press and hold the F key. Put it in the front. Or lower down the volume. Press and hold the F button. And then we're going to see if we can find... No. Let's see if we can find... A radio station uh, it's over here the band is over here there it is pretty neat right I think we forget that these radios <laughs> they have AM FM stations that are being broadcast in the US that is really neat. So you can always use it as a radio. <laughs> um, like a tra um, what do they call them? Uh, transistor radios, right? Okay. So that's that's really neat. So these antennas are awesome, and I think you will appreciate them now. It does come with their own antenna, so you might want to use that as well. So don't forget, that's available. Um, but again, do you need a signal stick? No. Signal sticks are nice because they bend, and you can put them in your bag that way. Okay. So, um, let's talk about some other things here. For example... Uh, let's talk about um, adapters, right? Uh, but before an adapter, let's talk about the speaker. Okay. So in this case, right, I do have the speaker here. The um, speaker is not that bad, but, you know, sometimes you have the radio. Let's say mobile, you have it in the back somewhere. Um, or you have it in the, on the floor and you really can't hear it then you might want to use an external speaker. 
this particular speaker is nothing special. Um, this one's the MFJ uh, 281 clear tone speaker. You can probably find a speaker at the 99 cent store. Um, you know, there's nothing special about this. Now, this is a monotone or a mono speaker. So we put this here on the connection. And then we move the switch over to speaker to give it more power, less attenuated. And then we can turn this on. All right. Let me change the band. And here's the volume. Okay. So you're able to listen. Now, if you put it on pH for headphones, listen. Sounds less. It's attenuated so that when you have your headphones, you won't hurt your ears. Uh, that's a little bit louder. Okay, so we're gonna turn it off. And what I want, what I want to do is, um, I can take um, um, a field recorder. Let's say this one's a Sony. I had one. I used it for a long time, and. Um, I, I want to record my uh, QSOS. So what I can do is I can turn this on, turn turn this on, lower the volume here, press record, and now, and we'll focus there. Now I can record my voice and the QSO at the same time. And so if they're speaking and I'm speaking at the same time, it'll record that. You might think, well, why not connect this directly to the radio? Well, unfortunately, the radio doesn't have an ability to hear my voice through the radio to the recorder. So you have to do some type of setup like this, which is a little inconvenient. But if you want to record the audio, that's awesome, right? Let's see. Eh, it's okay for what it is. It's not great, but uh, it's a good solution. So the question is, can I use my headphones, right, at the same time? Now, if this had a connection, that would be awesome. Just put it there, and then maybe this would still be on, right? But if you want to put your headphones, you have to buy other pieces. I'll turn this off. So what you need is a mono to stereo. This is a uh, right angle connection. The, this is a mono um, female. And this, uh, no, I'm sorry. This is a, a mono male. And in here, this female is a TRS, tip ring sleeve connection. You have to get a splitter, and this splitter here, this is a Belkin. This right here is a stereo, right? Tip ring sleeve connection, and it transfers stereo to both of these ends. So here, so this converts mono to stereo, and then it splits to both stereos. Okay, so here i plug this in here perfect right and then one end and this is the hard part you got to be very careful these things are very delicate this could probably snap if you put it too hard you put the stereo or i mean the speaker into one of the stereo jacks and then your headphones you put it in here so that you can hear those weak signals. And then you can turn it on. 
making sure that it's on speaker mode, right? And it's way more weaker. The signal's weaker because it needs to split the audio or the power, I guess, to this and to the headphones. So you have to increase the volume, the AF. If you don't have, and that's, you know, that's more to the right. And if this wasn't switched, you can't hear anything. And so that defeats the purpose. So make sure it's switched over to speaker mode and you'll be fine. Then you turn, put this nearby and you have to figure out where. All right, turn that on and then do your QSOs. I think uh, that's, a, that's an okay solution. Um, it's exciting to listen to other people, especially now that 10 meters is coming around and I've never had the experience of 10 meters be almost put on fire and start, you know, listening to other people around the world. So that's, that's always fun. So that's, that's one way of dealing with that on audio. Okay. Um, now let's talk about, um, other accessories that you might need. So here's a bag that I take with me. I have some silicone tape, which is very useful. Uh, this is almost like electrical tape, but I like this because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any glue here. So you can wrap things around very nice and tight. Like for example, I have this bioeno battery that uh, was getting loose. So I put some tape on there uh, to hold these two together and it's doing pretty well. Now, it's not sticky, the tape. So I all, all I need to do to make this loose is cut a little bit of this tape and then it just unravels very quickly. So it's very useful uh, to seal things. Um, I got a banana uh, plug here and some posts. I'm going to leave that one there because I, I want to use it. Demonstrate something for you. Um, I have caps that I find and, you know, when I buy things, uh, you know, sometimes you don't use it. You can use it for, you know, to cover things like in this case, the back of the connection. You don't have to. Um, then, you know, there's always other little caps and trinkets that you can collect, insulators and such, or even um, a jack. And you can put that all in the bag. Right. I think it got all loose in there. There we go. And you got these Allen wrenches. A lot of the times... Um, uh, you need them to adjust uh, your mobile antenna. And uh, a lot of times you get these little bags from different places. And you can always reuse them. Uh, there's a Over here there's a USB um, connection. USB connection for LED lights. And I'll, uh, I'm going to use this for a little bit. I'm going to demonstrate where I can use that. And then I have all these, like, adapters that over the years I've used in different situations, different scenarios. I even got end connectors as well, and I'll talk to you about those. So, those are in this little bag. I got that bag at Daiso for, like, two bucks. So going to 99 cent stores... <laughs> Um, believe it or not, uh, give you the opportunity to buy things to to enhance your experience. Um, okay, then let's talk about this banana plug here. Now, this is a very inexpensive way to create an antenna. A lot of times when we start our hobby, we feel like buying these relatively inexpensive or expensive antennas you know, that you might think, oh, this is going to do the job for me. But I think over time, you start realizing 
how um, simple these antennas are, or you start understanding the theory behind it. And it's always good. It's going to take a little while to, to go in there and study it, but you'll be surprised how inexpensive antennas can be for you to build. So this one is super inexpensive. Um, so here's a banana, a banana plug. This is a female version. Uh, is it or a male? No, no, this is a male version of a banana plug with uh, some posts. Uh, over here on the side, uh, there's a little stub that comes out that determines that this is the ground. So these caps, you can always, you know, unscrew and you can put them in the wrong position. So it's very important that you know which one's which. So one, one antenna that you can make is like a dipole. Um, or you can do a kind of like a, an L type dipole. So you can put this here. Okay. Snaps in there very nicely. And then that one you can find if, if you have a one of those swap meets, um, you know, like a ham swap meet or or one of these um, stores that sell ham equipment, you might be able to find this for less than five dollars, probably three dollars. I got this one for a dollar at this swap meet over here near Southern California. And then wire. Um, wire is inexpensive, especially um, if you find it in the trash. Um, a lot of times you would just find random wire and then um, you can, you know, use it for your antenna. I have two pieces here that have ring connectors on it. And so, both of them are about 16 and a half feet. I put one here. So I unscrew this. Right, I put one ring connection here. And then um, you can take like a water bottle, right? You can take a water bottle that's kind of like half full. Right? You can crush it, sorry, in the middle. You can attach this somehow, throw this up on a tree, and then you got your wire sort of, uh, this is 16 foot and a half, so I might go down, you un you uh, take the, the line out of the water bottle, or you can just throw the water bottle on a tree, I guess, and let it hang in there. So that's your element that's radiating up and down. Then you get your other wire that shouldn't be on the floor, should be somehow horizontal, maybe on top of a bush or on top of a rock. Um, there's different ways. And that's your antenna, your 20 meter antenna. Because on a dipole, you need um, two, ra two radiating elements. Uh, but we're doing an L shape, so you have one L one that's radiating up and up, up and down. And then the other one, I'm guessing it's also radiating too, but it's more like a ground plane. Um, going flat. If you put the wire on the floor, it might not work as well. You could put maybe three more or four more radials uh, that it's in the ground and that might be, that might work okay. Or you could take this, actually would be probably this one. There's another version here. This is a, this is also a banana plug, but with a different plug, right? This is the female version. What you can do is you can hang this in the air somehow. One is the radiating element and then four other radials and then hook this with a cable to this. That one will be called a quarter wave ground, no, yeah, quarter wave ground plane antenna. Quarter wave because the radiating element is a quarter of a wave. And that, my friends, would be a way better antenna. I do have a video, you can always check that one out. Um, that is inexpensive and it'll take you all over the world probably now that the band conditions are getting better. So with some wire that you can probably find maybe, or again, go to the 99 cent store. This of course you're gonna have to find somewhere, but they're not very expensive and you got yourself an antenna that's worth way more 
way more less expensive than any antenna that you see online you know why pay so much if you can make your own but <laughs> if you don't want to create your own antenna then you have the option of, of getting someone else's antenna all right now let's talk about um SWR meter. I like the Rig Expert. This is a Stick Pro. Now, you don't have to have one um, because you can always um, listen to the radio where that um, where you might get the full strength of your antenna. You can always use the meter, the SWR meter, in the radio. And then, you know, figure it out and just adjust as you go. It's really a lot of, um, when you have a lot of experience, you sort of can tell, you know, make this antenna shorter or longer and so forth. I, on the other hand, um, have had those smaller, um, uh, you know, um, SWR meters. <clears throat> I particularly don't like them. <clears throat> uh, you know, too small or just too cumbersome to, to use. This one, I've saved my pennies, and it really is um, a valuable tool. If you, This one, this is the Stick Pro. This one it has an end connector because it does other frequencies, uh, higher frequencies. So you need an adapter. Again, here's a little bag. I found this one also at uh, Daiso. And then you screw this on. And if you don't know what Daiso is, it's kind of like a 99 cent store. A Japanese 99 cent store. Well, it's not really 99. There's higher prices. But there's the adapter and there's my uh, VHF, UHF connection. Okay. Then unscrew this. I like to put that there. Um, you charge it through USB-C, which is great. So all you need to do is plug the antenna, turn this on, and then you have to read the directions on how to operate this. And there you go. One thing that you could do, and this is also part of, you know, something that you want to consider, is a tablet. Um, the tablet is very, very useful in the field. It's lightweight. And this particular tablet, it has Bluetooth. So these two can talk to each other. So this is connected to the antenna. Are connected through Bluetooth. There's a piece of software and I can read the graph way better. Um, the one thing that I don't like about tablets is its keyboard. So let's say you're doing a POTA activations. This is fine. I mean, I mean, you can have one hand you speak and then you press the person's, um, uh, you know, their call sign and such and use something like hammers. Again, I don't like the keyboard. I'm not too fancy with it, but it's portable and easy. And it can be easily a backup. Um, I use a laptop for um, my photo activations. I like the keys. It's a touch screen. It's Windows. It works fine. And then it works with other software. Once the blue moon, I'll forget my laptop because I usually take everything, you know, Put it at home. I don't. I don't leave anything in the car, and um, and then when I am ready to go, I'll forget the laptop. But usually, I'll have my bag with items, and then this will be coming with me because I really don't like to use my phone. Uh, but you could use your phone for hammers if you're doing a poda activation or a, a, a soda activation. So tablet is very useful. Uh, this one, you could connect to the laptop, and then the laptop will control everything. Much bigger screen as well, so that's something that you can also use as well. And then this one goes in there. Okay, so um, so we talked about the BNC, the antennas, SWR, the tablet, that you can use um, the Rig Expert. Um, now digital. Some people like to work on these radios with digital. 
There are many ways of doing this. Many ways to make this radio go digital. You can use a Raspberry Pi and some accessories uh, to make this go, uh, which is a great experience in understanding how to code things. Um, that phase already passed me. So I found that one of the easiest implementations, really very easy implementation, is using this device here, the Digi Rig. Um, I've used this, and we'll focus here a little bit better. I've used this for the A57D, and it should work also for the FT818. Uh, two plugs. Now you have to buy the cable separately, and they have them there. You have the two plugs, and then the other ends have serial ports. One goes into data, the other one goes to ACC. And then this other end is USB-C. There's the cable that goes into the, the um, PC. And then you do your magic with a different software that you have downloaded. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, these, um, this device. Um, and yes, there are other devices out there that uh, you might be more comfortable with. Uh, it might be maybe more, more easier for you, but this, I've seen that it's really plug and play almost. Um, in the Windows machine though, you do need some software um, that you need to get from somewhere to recognize this as some type of audio device. But that's all in the, in the, in the instructions. Uh, one thing that I seem to have missed in here is I do have a hub. Hub is really important if you want to connect other things and power on it, other things. And a uh, patch cord, that's really important as well. So those things are in there. I'm going to put this in here. Um, now let's talk about uh, powering or charging your BioNO battery. How would you do that? And that's part of the whole field um, exercise. Everything that I've talked about, almost everything, is you don't need, okay? You don't, you don't need a SWR meter. You don't need digital. You don't need any audio. Headphones, no, you don't need that. You don't need a bag worth of all little trinkets or extra antennas or a tablet that might be super expensive. Everything is ready to go in the box except for the antenna. But again, all these other little things, they kind of matter. They, they help. Um, it's, it's something, again, again, to enhance your experience. Now, let's talk about solar. Let's talk about um, our solar controller, <laughs> the Buddy Pole Power Mini. This thing, I cannot give enough praise. This thing is awesome. I've, I've done two videos on this, and it's super cool. Uh, you'll definitely um, like it if you're thinking about getting a solar controller. So let me um, let me set this up a little bit. So the Power Mini has um, you can put solar. Uh, it has a USB, so you can charge your phone if you need to. You plug in your 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 battery so this will allow you to charge the battery with the sun that's what this is for charge controller and then it has two plugs that you can connect um, things to that you have loads for like the radio right so what I'm gonna do is this is a connection I have at home solar and see I have the yellow which is pretty neat and they say you're supposed to put the battery first. Um, so well, let's put the battery first. A lot of people say, put the battery before you do anything. So this is the battery, right? Blue, like just the same blue as your battery. And then you hook this up. Now power it on, it's booting. Okay. 
uh, 13.34 volts, nice. Then, um, this is the panel I have out there. That's a 100 watt panel, right? 14.1, 14 point, 14.0 14 volts. And it's 1.7 or lower because the sun is going down. So it's giving me one amp right now, but it's um, not discharging over here on the side. It's not discharging anything, which is fine. Now this one, it's a patch cable, right? I'm gonna put over here. Doesn't matter which one. It's up to 30 amps. You can you can uh, draw as long as your battery can hold that. And then this one, and then you can you can put this here, right? You don't need to put it on top. That's the solar. And here, I connect it to my radio. There it is, right? And so I can turn this on. Let's lower the volume here. Let's lower it down more. You can see it's only drawing 0.4 amps, the radio, okay? And um, so this is really nice. It gives me a ton of information of what's going on. So it gives me a ton of information that I need. The battery, 13.6 volts, and it's being the battery, this radio is drawing 3.7 amps, or a third of an amp. The sun, my solar panel is at 20.2 volts because the sun is out, and uh, it's charging my battery at 0.27. Because most likely, um, the battery is already full. So in this situation, if the sun is out with a 100-watt solar panel, I can run this radio forever with this tiny, um, this tiny um, battery. I mean, the whole day, right? I can run it the whole day. Now, I can also add other things to this, like a light. This can go right here. Or is it this way? There we go, this way. See, I got some light now. So at night, I can have some light if I need. Or during the day, maybe I'm inside of a tent or something, and that's gonna give me some light while the sun is powering my radio and charging my battery. Now this goes over here. So all you need is there. And yes, you would probably have your other equipment as well. Um, I'm gonna turn this off. So that's nice if you're doing a contest and you have to do the whole day. So I'm going to unplug the power, the solar connection. I'm going to put it on my, I have this cool um, uh, battery that, um, I have this cool battery that I use, bioenergy battery to charge uh, to, you know, if I need a fan or uh, use my light. And you have to be careful when you take these off. You don't want to ruin anything. There we go. Make sure you slip it out uh, straight. Like this light right here is powered by the sun. So the battery is being charged with the sun. And here's my patch cable that goes in here okay so let's put this here for now right another thing that you could use is a another type of solar controller this one is a uh, power max or power rack I mean power rack uh, MPPT version says right there, MPPT, uh, which is whatever, max power point, um, point something, point tracking maybe, which means that it takes all the voltage and squeezes out as much amps as possible. What happens here is that uh, first of all, 
using this, you'll get some noise in the radio. So if you're charging your battery through this, you're gonna get noise. Uh, you use the buddy pole, it's really ham, ham friendly. So this won't give you any noise. Well, I haven't heard any noise on my connections, but this one you will. Um, so this one, what I'll usually use, if I'm not using my radio and I wanna charge my battery a little bit faster, this is the one to use. Um, and they're not, they're relatively inexpensive. I think this is $30, the smaller one. I did, con I did cut this out. I think it had a different connection and whatever they're called, MO4s or I don't remember what they're called, but they have a different solar connection. Cut that and then put my own. So I put this one on the solar panel and then this one goes over here. I put over here, this is source, the source of the power on this side. And then on this side, we get the load. In this case, it would be the battery. And then it will display how much power is being fed into the battery. And um, it's really compact. All this is compact. Do you need this? No, this will shut down automatically. But it's always nice to know how much power is coming in and out. Now, you might say, well, I don't have a solar panel that's 100 watts outside. Can I use something else? Yes. You can also use something like this foldable one. This one is a power film, 20 watt. Gives you about 1.2 amps, not really. Gives you maybe like three quarters of an amp on a good day. It might give you an amp or or maybe up to 1.2, but it has to be, the sun has to be super bright and, and everything needs to be lit. Um, it's foldable. It's really nice. Again, it gives you an amp um, or so when the sun's out and it just folds out very nicely. It's well built. Apparently, if a bullet goes through here, the solar panel's not ruined. Uh, I wish they would make, I know, um, I know uh, Parafilm has made a new type of foldable solar panel, which is super cool. And I wish they would, um, you know, make a, a smaller version because it, it apparently it gives you more wattage. These are not inexpensive. These are a bit pricey, but it's lightweight. It will give you the amount that you need to charge this in the sun. So you don't need to take a fancy, um, a fancy solar panel that's really stiff and, and brittle. Although those are less expensive now. Um, Parafilm does do a five watt version and that gives you maybe um, 200 milliamps or less. And that might be enough to keep this trickled, charged up to give you another hour or two. Um, I have that one too and it's really, really nice. Really, really compact. Um, but this one seems to be reasonable. The only thing I don't like about this, it, it's floppy if there's wind, so you have to tie it down. Okay, but other than that, it's really nice. And although oh, another, another bad thing about it is it's pretty expensive, but there's not many of these things. There are, there are things that are foldable, but not as elegant. And also these are military type grade uh, materials and specifications. So, you know, they have a certain, a certain amount of um, quality to them. Wow, okay, then the next thing, first one is a tuner. Now this is not the ZA-17 or 818. This is the L LDG, you can barely see it there. This one is the Z100 plus or something, yeah. Z100 plus. Um, I don't know how to set it up yet, but apparently you can, and it's pretty big. Now, why would you need a tuner? Now, I have everything in here because this tuner is good for other radios. But look, the tuner is almost as big as a radio, isn't it? So, this is, um, uh, again, an LDG tuner, Z100 plus. 
There's batteries in here, so you don't have to connect it to the wall or to a battery. Um, a tuner, what that what this does, it allows you to have an antenna that's not res resonating perfectly, uh, or very it's resonating very close to the frequency that you want, and this will make it uh, resonate. It uh, does a couple of magical things, and then you're able to make your transmission of your signal more efficient. So you could put an amplifier on this. And I know some of you are going to say, and there's not many of you who are still watching this, but for those that are, some of you might be like, you don't need an amplifier, just get an uh, FT-857D. Why even bother with that? Yeah, you're right. But on occasion, you do need an additional extra power. MXP50M. Sorry about that. So this is an amplifier uh, that um, you can use for your FT818. It's specifically made really for this radio, but I've modified it so that I can connect it to the um, IC705. And you have to put other, um, you have to modify it. And that's why it looks like this. So for me, for this, I had to, because I modified it, I had to um, build another connection, and I did. I put this together. So this one, I hook it up here. See that? And this is a, a connection that I put in probably the ACC in there, and I'm ready to go, and then I have power. Now, technically, you could tap into this and they will run, but it's probably better to get an external battery if you're gonna run one of these. I've done it before. As a matter of fact, it's possible now you could use the internal battery here, and then you can have this run this. But it won't, it won't last for a long time because you're draining the battery much faster. So this is something that you might wanna consider this um, this particular um, um, amplifier. These are relatively inexpensive, um, and you might have to modify it, like I said, but it's way more less expensive than some other things that are out there. It's Chinese made, quality is so-so. Um, I haven't had any real issues with it. Uh, you know, you just have to make sure you don't blow uh, some of the secretary. Uh, so you need to really make sure you know what you're doing with this. I do have a video on how to how to like um, how to like uh, modify it for the IC705. I like these soda bean bags. Uh, you can put items in here. And they're um, they're okay for what for what I use them for. And then finally, wow, a lot of things, right? I got this a bag from Five Eleven. It's a store. I'm not sure how 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 many stores they have. There's a few in Southern California. They have um, um, kind of like um, emergency communication or um, military type uh, equipment, bags and stuff that um, are really, really awesome. Now this particular bag, bag is one of those medic bags. And what I did was I separated this lip here and then, and then um, operated a little bit here to make this a little bit wider. But you can find bags anywhere. You don't have to buy this bag in particular. But I'm, I'm liking this bag a lot um, because this will fit in just like this, as you can see. And then I can easily, if you wanted to, let's see if I still have it here. Here it is. You can buy an extension, an extension for this. So you can put this more on the ground. Like on, let's say I'm, um, doing some field operation, I can extend it now easily. And then I can put my headphones here. 
or I can put the speaker as well. And there you go. Now when you're ready to pack up, there's not a lot of room in there, but you can easily put your uh, microphone in there and you can put your headphones. Oh, there it is, it's ready to go. Nice and compact. This I don't like. I wish this was ha has a clip, but it doesn't. Uh, again, do you have to get this bag? No, of course not. Oh, here's another. Oh, here's another of these. Um, what are they called? MSR Night Glow. These are really nice because they give you a little more leverage. And that's it. Wow, that's a long video, isn't it? <laughs> Talking, talking about um, all the different things that you can use for your FT-818. As a matter of fact, a lot of this, except for these antennas, um, this one, right, the ones that have BNC, um, or the BNC banana, you can use that for the FT-857D. Because uh, everything else sort of is modular for that, except for this too. So one thing I didn't talk about too much was a pocket knife. Very useful. This one's a tinker. I don't particularly like the super tinker, but I like that one in particular. Everything else is, I think, um, pretty straightforward. Again, a lot of it is optional, okay? Don't feel pressure or pressure to buy any other thing that you don't need. A lot of these things that I have here is because I'm in the hobby now, what, for four years. And so little by little, I found things that I like. Those that I don't, I just sell it to someone or give it to someone. And then that money that I get, I get, you know, I'll buy something else. And then now I hope uh, to see you soon on, on the air and um, have a great day. This is Frank Whiskey Charlie Zero Oscar.